What if we start with an improper fraction and need to convert it into a mixed number? Well, whenever we have an improper fraction, we know there's at least one whole fraction hiding in there that we could simplify out. The question is, how many? To see what I mean, let's try converting the improper fraction 7 over 2 into a mixed number using a little trial and error. First, let's try subtracting out just one whole fraction. 7 over 2 minus 2 over 2 equals 5 over 2. That means we can write 7 over 2 as the mixed number 1 and 5 over 2 since we subtracted out one whole fraction and had 5 over 2 left over. And even though that's true, it's bad form because 5 over 2 is still an improper fraction, which means that there's at least one more whole fraction hiding in there that we could have subtracted out. So let's try again, but this time let's subtract out two whole fractions. 7 over 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 2 over 2 equals 3 over 2. That means we could write 7 over 2 as the mixed number 2 and 3 over 2, since we subtracted out two whole fractions and had 3 over 2 left over. But that's still bad form, because the fraction part is still improper. We could have subtracted out another whole fraction. So let's try again, subtracting three whole fractions this time. 7 over 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 2 over 2 equals 1 half. That means we could write 7 over 2 as the mixed number 3 and 1 half since we subtracted out three whole fractions and had one half left over. And that's the proper mixed number form of seven over two because it's a whole number and a proper fraction. So there's no more whole fractions that we could simplify out. That process makes sense, but it's kind of messy having to subtract out so many whole fractions. It turns out there's a shortcut we can take here too. Just like multiplication is repeated addition, division is basically repeated subtraction. That means we can figure out how many whole fractions we can subtract out of an improper fraction by just dividing the top number by the bottom number. Let's do that with our example 7 over 2. If we divide 7 by 2, we find out that 2 will divide into 7 3 times, leaving a remainder of 1. That remainder is actually important as we'll see in a minute. Notice that the answer to our division problem is exactly how many whole fractions we were able to subtract out of the improper fraction, 3. So the answer to the division tells us what the whole number part of the mixed number will be. And here's the really cool part. The remainder of the division tells us what the leftover fraction will be. The remainder is the numerator, the top number, of the leftover fraction. In this case, since the remainder is 1, we'll have 1 over 2 left over in our mixed number. Let's do one more example to make sure you've got that. Let's convert 22 over 5 into a mixed number. If we divide 22 by 5, we see that 5 will go into 22 four times with a remainder of 2. That means that the whole number part of the mixed number will be 4, and the fraction part will be 2 over 5, because our remainder was 2. That's how many fifths will be left over. So 22 over 5 is the same as 4 and 2 fifths. All right. So now you know what mixed numbers are. They're a combination of a whole number and a proper fraction. And you know that those two parts are actually being added together, even though the plus sign is usually not shown. You also know that a mixed number is basically a simplified form of an improper fraction, and that you can use the procedures we learned to convert back and forth between the two forms. Learn more at mathantics.com.